Hello, my name is Colin, and in this episode of Let's Learn Blender, we'll be looking at a little thing that's sometimes referred to as hard surface modeling. For the sake of this video though, I'll be calling it smoothing and hard edges. One of the most important skills to be able to master in learning how to model 3D objects in Blender is being able to control where an object is smooth versus where you have a hard edge or a hard corner. In this video, we're going to be going over a lot of different ways you can approach this. In this video, we're going to look at the basics between the two basic shading modes of a mesh object called Shade Smooth versus Shade Flat. We'll be looking at making edges apparent on a smooth object using what's called auto smooth, which is a very easy way of getting an edge on a smooth object that's actually visible. We'll be looking also at a big topic called the subdivision surface modifier. We'll be looking at edge creases, proximity loops, edge splitting and the edge split modifier. We'll be using the bevel tool as well as the bevel modifier along with bevel weights on edges. If you want to go ahead and jump to any point in this video, I'll put a link to each chapter time code in the description area below this video on YouTube. So go ahead and check those links out. But as always, if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel and I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Blender or in the do game engine or other technology go ahead and click on subscribe and that bell icon and that way you'll see my videos pop up more frequently so in blender when you have a 3d mesh its default shading is what's called shade flat and that means you can see each individual face each polygon shaded in a different manner, so with a different lighting level uh, on it. And so we can see each side of the cube. If I right click on a mesh object and I say uh, shade smooth instead of shade flat, the default, well, it will blend together all of the shadings of all the individual faces, making the object look at least on its surface more smooth. Now, shade smooth is great depending on how you use it and it has to be used appropriately but as you can see on this cube, it doesn't work because we want to see edges between the faces because the faces are at a 90 degree different angle from one another. And so there should be a line across each one. And this sort of shading with these shadows does not make sense. If I go ahead and right click and say shade flat, I can go and turn that off. But if I were to add a different sort of object that didn't have any edges on it, like I'll go up to the add menu and I'm gonna add a mesh. Well, let's add a monkey and I'll use my move tool and move the monkey head over. Uh, there we go. And because this monkey head does not require any edges that need to be visible, if I right click on the monkey head with it selected and I say shade smooth, hey, the monkey head looks uh, mostly better. But let's go ahead and check out another object. I'll go up to the add menu and I'll add a mesh, a cylinder. And if I move the cylinder over and, and take a look at it, well, there are some faces that I want to blend together, like all the faces that run around the sides. Oh, let's call this a soup can, all the sides of a soup can. We want to blend all those together. So if I right click on the cylinder and say shade smooth, well, all of those faces do blend together nicely, but again, we get this problem where we don't see any edges, including the edge along the top, uh, circumference of the circle on the top and on the bottom. We want those. So how do we solve this problem? It turns out there's a very easy fix. If I select the object that I want to make have an edge and I already have shade smooth turned on on that object, and I go over to the properties editor and I go down to this little green triangle, it's called the object data tab, and I find a section called normals, I can simply check auto smooth. And this will make it so that if there is a difference in direction between two faces that is more than 30 degrees, it will create an edge there automatically. That's called auto smooth. I almost wish this was turned on by default because it is a little bit tricky to find, but there you go. Auto smooth off, auto smooth on. If I turn up the degree difference that determines whether or not there is an edge or isn't, if I turn that up above 90 degrees, you will see we have that same problem again. And so I could turn that, you know, that value back down below 90 degrees, or I can define my own hard edges. So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this value up above 90 degrees because I want to define precisely which edges will have 
that hard edge on it and which will not. So now we have to jump into edit mode on this 3D mesh object in Blender. And if you're not familiar with at least a little bit of 3D modeling in edit mode in Blender, I'll put a link up on the screen right now to this video tutorial series called Let's Learn Blender here on my channel. And the very last video in this series was an introduction to 3D modeling in edit mode in Blender. So you know how to edit the edges and faces and vertices along with some of the 3D modeling tools of a mesh object in Blender if you don't don't know how to do those things go ahead and check that playlist out what i'll do though now is i'll go up to the mode menu and i'll go into edit mode on this selected mesh object and i'm going to go into not vertex select mode but edge select mode up here and i'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and click on one of the edges that runs around the top of this soup can and i'm going to right click with all those edges selected by the way when you hold alt and you click on an edge, it selects that loop of edges. If I have that loop selected and I right click on it, I can say, uh, well, hey, this is now a context menu that is different than the context menu that we saw in the object mode of this mesh because we are selecting edges right now. That's the kind of sub-selection mode that we're in. If I right click, I get a bunch of options of things that I can do with edges. And what I'm gonna select is mark sharp. If I do that, well, the edge will become this kind of aquamarine color. And if I go back into object mode, you can see I have to find those edges as a hard edge. The bottom edge still has that problem. So I'll go back into edit mode. I'll press tab on my keyboard to do that. The tab key, of course, switches between object mode and edit mode of a mesh. And I'm gonna hold alt in edge select mode and click on one of those edges to select the edge loop. I will right click. You can also press control E on your keyboard. That'll bring up the edge menu and I'll say mark sharp. And so now I have a sharp edge along the top, kind of an aqua, aqua marine and bottom. And if I wanna make a label edge on this soup can like that one, I can select it and right click or control E and I can say mark sharp and I'll go back into object mode and now you can see I have my defined edges, even though this is above 90 degrees down here. But let's go ahead now and revisit our friend Suzanne, the monkey head. The monkey head has shade smooth turned on. So if I right click, yeah, shade smooth is active. We don't see the individual uh, faces or polygons on this monkey head, but it still doesn't look very smooth because the monkey head, if I go back to shade flat, is not very high poly. We can still see these big chunky faces or polygons on the mesh. I wanna smooth it out. To do that in Blender, we have to use what's called a modifier. And modifiers, when you select a mesh object, are over here in the properties editor under the wrench tab. This wrench tab lets you add, you can see an add modifier, a little pull down menu here, modifiers to that selected object. And the one we're gonna to add to make this mesh smooth is called the subdivision surface modifier. Some people call it the subsurf modifier for short, but here it is. If I click on this modifier, it adds it to the mesh. And when you add a modifier, well, you can see what this one does. It takes the mesh and it smooths it out. It's made many more faces by subdividing up each face. We'll talk about it in a sec and smoothing it all out. One thing that's important to know is that modifiers are procedural changes to a mesh and they can be turned off and on so long as you do not apply the modifier permanently. So this is a modifier here that I've added to this, what's called a modifier stack. You can add many different modifiers in order from top to bottom and you can get rid of them and it'll revert to how the mesh previously was. So if I go ahead and add this back, the subsurf modifier, there it is. What I would probably never want to do is click on this little arrow and say apply because that would make the change that this modifier is making kind of with an algorithm that involves math permanently if I press apply. So don't go ahead and do that unless you really, really know that that's what you want to do. By the way, if I press tab with this mesh object selected with this modifier on it, to go into edit mode, you can kind of see that I'm seeing sort of like a mesh ghost version of how the mesh object actually is. And I can go ahead and I can still edit this monkey head mesh. I might go into face mode. I might select the two top faces on the top of the head or forehead of the monkey head. And I might move them up and you can see the meshes being smooth in real time using that subsurf modifier. And I can press tab to go back into uh, object mode. And there we go.
The subsurf modifier is using an algorithm called Catmull Clark, and I'm not going to get into too heavy a detail here with this uh, algorithm, but basically what it does is it takes every, I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go back into uh, edit mode of the mesh. And as you can see, if I look at this face that I have selected here from essentially the top view, it is cut in two directions. So it has been subdivided, making four faces on the smaller mesh. And this is what the Catmull Clark algorithm does on a 3D object. It subdivides a 3D object's faces and then smooths the corners out and averages everything out into, yes, a slightly smaller mesh it does shrink a little bit and you can turn up in the modifier settings here the number of subdivisions in either the viewport or in the render when you go up to the render menu and render your image out with lighting through the camera's perspective you can have a different number of subdivisions uh, for that so if i turn this up to two in the viewport you can see my mesh gets even more smooth i'll press tab to go back into object mode and you can see the object is fairly smooth and i can go ahead and turn that up even more generally you turn render up higher usually to three four or higher and you leave levels uh, for the viewport down at one or two if i go ahead and now right click and set this mesh object to shade smooth you can see now it looks a whole lot nicer with both of those methods shade smooth and the subsurf modifier on the object at the same time if I go ahead and add the subsurf modifier to this cube, of course, I have to select the cube, go to the wrench tab, go to add modifier and select the subdivision surface modifier right here. You can see what it's doing again. If I press tab to go into edit mode, you can see the original faces. By the way, this subsurf modifier has an option. It's called on cage. And when you enable that option, it basically lets you see where your original uh, edges are on the newly shrunk and smooth uh, mesh based on the subsurf modifier. So if I go ahead and turn this up, you can see where my original edges are. And I can go ahead and still, if you're in uh, vertex select mode, you can grab, I'll use the G key and grab and move around that vertex. So there you go. I'll right click to put it back though. Let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode. I'm going to go back over to my uh, cylinder because if you look carefully at the cylinder, especially from a more top angle, you will see if I zoom in that this default cylinder has fairly large edge segments. If I right click and say shade flat again, you'll see these faces uh, are not that narrow. So my cylinder does not really look that smooth. I'm kind of faking it here. So what happens if I set it to uh, shade smooth and I want to add the subsurf modifier to the cylinder to make it even more smooth? Well, I'll select that mesh. I'll go to my wrench tab. I'll go to add modifier. I'll add the subdivision surface modifier and it does not look very good. If I press tab to go into edit mode, you can see sort of what's happening. I'm still maintaining those edges because of my sharp edges, because of the auto smooth that I turned on earlier. Uh, you can see under normals, auto smooth is turned on, but because of the subdivision surface modifier and the fact that the top face and the bottom face of this cylinder are one big, what's called an N-gon, this smoothing is not working very well. So how do I deal with this? Well, it turns out there are several ways. The first way is by using what's called an edge crease. Now, don't confuse that. If I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, some edges here. I'll go into edge select mode. I'll hold alt on my keyboard and select that to a hole. I'll select something else and then hold alt and click to select all of that edge loop up top there. Do not confuse edge creases, which is what I'm talking about right now with sharp edges, which are these aqua aquamarine lines I have on my mesh that I defined earlier in this video. So sharp edges, which is what we did earlier, lets you define where edges should be in relation with this auto smooth option under the object data tab in the normal section here. Creases, on the other hand, let you define where a sharp edge should be when you have the subdivision surface modifier added to your mesh. So creases belong with a subsurf modifier. If I go ahead and select that whole loop of edges again with alt and then click on you know, one of those edges and I right click or I can press again control E on my keyboard, I can define an edge crease. Now an edge crease, you can get to it with shift E as well. I'll click on it from control E this menu. Edge creases aren't just off or on like hard edges. Creases have a weight to them. So you can see when I move my mouse away from the middle of my selection, 
the top of the cylinder becomes more pronounced and that edge or that crease becomes more pronounced. So if I pull a mouse out from the middle of that selection all the way out and then click, you can see I've defined an edge crease and that crease level, I can go ahead and open up this little popover down here right after I complete that click has a factor of one. So if I go ahead and press control Z just to demonstrate this, if I go ahead now and press shift E on my keyboard, that will let me make a crease out of my selected edges and I can pull my mouse out and actually I'll only go halfway out there and I'll click and I've made this sort of a crease, but I'll turn this all the way up to a factor of one. Now, if I click somewhere else, you can see crease edges are now this purpley color and the original hard edges are this aqua color. If I want to make sure I know where those aqua colored lines are, I can go up to this little pull down menu. This is my overlays menu. And I, if I go down all the way to the bottom almost, let's see if I can find it. Oh, you know what? It's right here. Creases, sharp, bevel, and seams. I don't have any seams in my scene right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn seams off. I have sharp edges and I have creases and they are overlapping. So I can't tell where one or the other really is if they're both defined on the same edges. So I'm gonna turn off sharp markings there and I'm going to in edge select mode, in edit mode, I'm gonna hold alt and click on and select this loop of edges at the bottom of my cylinder and shift E on my keyboard again, move my mouse out. So if I press tab to go back into object mode, I now have the subsurf modifier on this cylinder. So it is much smoother and I can turn up the levels in the viewport to make it really smooth. And there we go, I've got my smooth cylinder. The next way you can ensure that you have a smooth object with a hard edge is by using what are called proximity loops. I'm gonna go ahead and add another mesh object. I'll add another cylinder and I'll move it on over next to uh, my original one there. What I'm gonna do here is add that subsurf modifier again. So I'll select the mesh, I'll go to my wrench tab, I'll go to add modifier and subdivision surface, and I'll turn up the levels in the viewport to two. If I wanna make my edges again, what I can do is go into edit mode and I can make what are called proximity loops, which are really just edges next to an existing edge because when you have two or more, usually at least three edges that are close to one another, it prevents the subdivision surface modifier from really making a rounded smooth around those close together edges. So what I'll do here in edit mode of this mesh is I'm gonna use the loop cut tool. So I'll switch to that tool and I'm gonna hover my mouse over kind of the long up and down segments on the edge of my soup can. I'm gonna click and drag up to create this new whole edge loop right up next to the top of my soup can. I'll do the same thing again with the loop cut tool and I'll click and I'll drag down. And as you can see, by having two edge loops, I'm gonna go back to my select tool, uh, this one and this one close together, we are forcing the subsurf modifier to do less smoothing because it can't when two edges are close to one another. Now, this isn't ideal because, well, you can see the top of the soup can isn't totally sharp. And that's because again, we need at least three edges to accomplish this. So I've made an edge loop just below on the radius or around the radius of the soup can below the top edge. So now what I'll do is I'll go into face select mode. And instead of using the loop cut tool, I can use the inset faces tool here. And with that top face selected, I can just click and drag this little gizmo and that will create a face inside of the top of my cylinder or soup can. And I'm just gonna make it very slightly smaller. So right there. So now if I zoom in and pan up, you can see I've got three edges. Ooh, I'll go back to my select tool and edge select mode. I've got an edge loop there and there and there. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'll go down to the bottom. I'll go to face select mode, select the bottom face, use my inset faces tool there, pull up just very slightly and adjust it and let go. So now I've got my three edge loops again, there, there, and there. And so now if I press tab to go back into object mode, I've got an even more realistic looking edge because it's not as perfectly unrealistically sharp as the original edge, which I made using an edge crease. So this is more realistic, although it does create much more geometry, many more faces, which might not be ideal if you're bringing your model into a game engine. Of course, I can right click on this mesh and say shade smooth as well. So 
There you go. That's the proximity loop method. The next way of creating a hard edge on a smooth object is by using what's called edge splitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new mesh. I'll go up to the add menu, mesh cylinder again. I'll move this one over. And there are actually two ways of doing edge splitting, a more destructive way and a modifier way. So I'm gonna take this uh, cylinder and I'll press shift D on my keyboard, shift D duplicates, and then I'll press X on my keyboard to move the duplicate. Uh, cylinder right there. On this cylinder, I'm going to actually split in edit mode the top uh, section or the top face of my cylinder away from the edge section. So they will actually be broken apart, but still in the same mesh. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom face. Once we have separate sections, the subdivision surface modifier doesn't do smoothing between separate sections. So it will look pretty good. Although this is Again, quite destructive for obvious reasons. So I'm gonna go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna go into edge select mode. I'll go ahead and zoom in and I'm gonna select, I'll hold alt this top edge and I'm gonna go up to the mesh menu and say split selection. So along the edge that I have selected right now, it's going to split the mesh into two sub separate meshes. So I'll go ahead and click. What that means is that if I select this section, which is just one face, and I use my move tool and I move it up, it is now broken away. So really where there was, you know, one edge is actually right there and right there, those two edges were one edge just a moment ago. They're now two. So I could actually move this top face uh, up and away. I'm gonna go ahead and press control Z a few times because I'm not gonna actually move it, although it is separate. I'll do the same thing for the bottom. I'll go into edge mode. I'll go ahead and select that bottom edge loop with the alt key. I'm gonna go up to mesh and split selection. Be careful you don't accidentally select uh, anything under the separate menu, that's a different thing. So split and selection. So now we've got the same thing down here with this face. I'm gonna leave it where it was though. If I now go back into object mode with the tab key of course and go to the wrench tab and add modifier, I can add the subdivision surface modifier and you can see it doesn't smooth over that edge because it's not really an edge between two connected faces. They're between two separate sections. So it does exactly what we want. This does have implications later on. This is destructive. So I would not recommend this way. There is a modifier based version of this process though. If I go to this cylinder and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it because we have one more example after this, I believe. If I go ahead and select this cylinder, what I can do instead of actually manually destructively separating or splitting the object using edges and edge split, if I select this cylinder and go to the wrench tab for modifiers, if I add a modifier, it's called edge split. And this does the same thing, but procedurally, and that means we can turn it off and on later and get rid of it later if we don't want it. So I prefer this method, edge split. I'll go ahead and add it. So what it's doing here is it's splitting the mesh based on, again, the angle of the different directions of faces. So anything above 30 degrees will get split. So it is essentially splitting off the top and bottom faces of my cylinder. I could turn this off and only allow it to split the mesh using sharp edge definitions that I could make on my own. I'll go ahead and do that in just a moment, but I'll leave edge angle on and turn sharp edges off. If I now go ahead and add the subdivision surface modifier, you can see what's happening because I've split the edges first based on the angle and then I add the subsurf modifier and the order here does matter. Edge split is performed first and then the subdivision surface modifier is done second. It goes from top to bottom it works. So I can go now and because I still have my faces set to shade flat, I can right click shade smooth and there we go. Now, as I mentioned just a moment ago, if you don't want to rely on this edge angle value, you can turn it off and now it's not splitting any edges because neither of these options is set and so it's not doing anything. I can define where this edge split modifier splits the mesh based on my own sharp edges. So we've seen this before. If I press tab to go into edit mode, if I go into edge select mode, I'll hold alt and click to select this top loop of edges. And if I press control E on my keyboard, I can define that edge as a sharp. And that will allow me if I have this sharp edges option turned on to make my edge split the mesh where those sharp edges are defined. So I'll go ahead and hold alt and click on that edge down there in edge select mode, of course, to select that edge loop. I'll go ahead and press control E on my keyboard, mark sharp, and there we go. So if I press tab, I've got basically the same result, 
but again, this will result in a very sharp edge, whereas when I used proximity loops, I got a nice little bit of rounding at the top and bottom, unlike with several of the other methods. Now, it does need to be said though, that there is a limitation to this edge split modifier method, and that is that you can only work in one path. In fact, I don't have my display of my hard edges uh, on the screen right now, so I'm gonna go up to my viewport overlays, and I keep saying hard edges, it's actually sharp edges. I'll turn those on so we can see that aqua line there, and I'll go ahead and turn off oh, creases because we don't need to see those right now anyways. The limitation with the edge split modifier is such that you can have one path of edges that are all connected end to end and splitting on that essentially loop or straight line of connected edges will split probably just fine until you go in multiple directions at the same point or from the same vertice. So if I select that edge and I press Ctrl E on my keyboard and mark it as not a hard edge but a sharp edge. You can see if I press tab to go back into object mode that this edge split is doing a funny thing. It's actually pulling in bad ways and making a hole in my mesh. So if I go a little bit to the right, press tab to go to edit mode, select that edge, control E, mark sharp. You can see again what's happening. It's creating a gap in my mesh because it's pulling in too many directions at the same time. So if you're going to use the edge split modifier, it's really only for one path uh, end to end. Lastly, we can create hard edges on smooth objects using either the bevel tool or the bevel modifier. I'm going to go ahead and select this last cylinder and I'm going to actually duplicate it one more time, shift D on my keyboard and then I'll tap X on my keyboard to move it over only on the X axis. A very simple way of adding a hard edge on a smooth object is by using the bevel tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select the cylinder. I'll go up to the wrench tab and add modifier and I'll add the subdivision surface modifier. And so what I'm going to do here is press tab to go into edit mode. Of course, I'm going to go into edge select mode, hold alt and select the top edge loop on the cylinder. And just to save time, I'll hold Alt and Shift on my keyboard at the same time. And I'll click on this bottom edge to select two edge loops. And I'm gonna use the bevel tool here, which will allow me to split this edge, in fact, both edges separately into multiple edges. So with this tool enabled, you can see I get this handle. If I click and drag and pull it a little bit away from the origin of that object, you can see it took the edges that I had and split them into two. As soon as you let go, you get your options down here in this popover little uh, pop up and you can change the width of the bevel. That means how much of a diagonal surface you have. So if I hold shift actually and click and drag in this little section, you can see I'm making a larger bevel or a smaller bevel. And what I want to do here is make a small bevel, but I don't want just one level of segments, I want to create at least two segments because that's going to give me my proximity loops, um, the original edge in the middle and then one above and one below. And you can see when the bevel is very small like this, if I press tab to go back into object mode, I get that same effect and it does not give me such a harsh edge. I can go ahead, of course, and right click and shade smooth. And there we go. So as you can see, the bevel tool is a very quick way of adding proximity loops, but it is a fairly destructive process because if I want to continue modeling with this mesh, you know, I have all of these extra edge loops in here and I might want to work with this mesh in such a way that these might get in the way. And if you're experienced enough in Blender, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to press tab and I'll focus on my last cylinder here. Instead of using the bevel tool, I'm going to use the bevel modifier. So I'll go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the cylinder in a really not very pleasant way. And then I'll add a bevel modifier. And this does the same thing as the bevel tool, but procedurally, that means I can undo it later and I can affect it kind of on a global scale across my entire mesh object, or I can define where exactly I want the bevel modifier uh, to act upon on the mesh. So I can change the amount here. Now I've actually got these in the wrong order and I did that on purposely. It is smoothing the mesh out and then it is beveling the edges defined on the angle again on the smoothed out 
mesh. I don't want to do it in that order. I want to have it bevel the top and bottom uh, circular edge loops before it smooths out the mesh. So I can actually reorder these two modifiers. If I click in this little dotted area and drag, I can move the modifiers uh, up and down. This is a changed interface from older versions of Blender where you had little up and down arrows. You can now just click and drag to reorder. So I want the bevel to happen first. And when I do that, you can see it looks a bit closer to what I want. So uh, the bevel modifier goes first, it goes on top, and then we're subdividing on the bottom. If I change the amount now, you can see what's happening. If I go down to zero, you know, it doesn't do what we want. And I don't want just one segment. I want at least two. I'm going to try even three, and I'll hold shift and drag this amount down. Shift lets you get more precise. And you can see now that I have a really nice looking cylinder that's very smooth. I can turn up my levels in the viewport and I can right click shade smooth, but I get that nice, very subtle rounded edge. Now, I don't need to let Blender decide for me based on this angle, what edges I want to bevel. I can actually change this to a few different options. I happen to be a fan of this weight option. So if I change angle to weight, all of that beveling goes away because I haven't defined any weights. What does this mean? Well, it's another way that we can mark edges, kind of like creases, kind of like sharp edges. So to do this, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'll press tab on my keyboard. I'm going to go into edge select mode. I'll hold alt and select this loop of edges. I should be using my selection tool there, not whatever I had before. And I'm going to, with those edges selected in that loop, press control E on my keyboard. And this time I'm going to set the edge bevel weight. And when I select that, this is a lot like a crease. It's a weight, so it doesn't just turn off or on. I'm going to pull my mouse out and then click. And you can see I get this little popover down here. I've turned on these edges, the bevel weight, which is another way you can mark edges again up to one. If I want to turn that down, I can press control E, edge bevel weight, and then move my mouse in a little bit and click. And so now the factor is, you know, something different than it was. I, I turned it down by 0 0.422, uh, but I'll go ahead and turn that back up again, edge bevel weight and drag out to get a higher number. And then I'll click up, I'll drag that up. And uh, there we go. So now that I've marked this bevel weight, I'll actually press alt A to deselect. So you can see bevel weights are in blue. And if you can't see this marked bevel weight uh, edge loop, you might need to turn on this bevel uh, option, I can turn off sharp if that's covering up the bevel blue. I'm not sure which order uh, supersedes or covers up the other ones, but we can have this one on. So with these edges marked as having a bevel weight higher than zero, the bevel modifier with this limit method is affecting those edges and I can turn the amount up or down. So you can see I can have a partially rounded edge. Now I can mark different edges with different weights. So I'll go ahead and select uh, the bottom loop of edges. I'll hold alt and click uh, with edge select mode enabled. And I will press control E on my keyboard to bring up the edge menu and I'll click on edge bevel weight and I'll pull the mouse out. Oh, a little bit. And you can see what happens. I can set the factor to a different factor. And you can see I can have two different hardnesses of edges on the same mesh. And it takes a little bit of practice and playing around to get used to it, especially if you're setting uh, the edge weight more than once on the same edges to take off or turn uh, down or turn up the amount of bevel weight on any given edge or edge loop. Again, it just takes playing around. So here we go. This is probably the most powerful method of making hard edges or semi rounded edges on a smooth mesh. So there you have it. In this video, we've talked about many ways you can take a mesh object in Blender and make it look smooth while maintaining hard edges where appropriate on that mesh. We've talked about the difference between shading smooth versus shading flat on a mesh object in Blender. We've talked about the subdivision surface modifier. We've talked about using the subsurf modifier with creases to maintain hard edges. We've talked about using proximity loops and how that affects a mesh object in terms of its topology, which makes a more realistic looking edge, but again, creates more faces to work with. We've used the edge split tool under the mesh menu in edit mode 
to split a mesh up before we use the subdivision surface tool so that the smoothing did not happen over two separate sub meshes in the same mesh. We've also used the edge split modifier to make that process easier, but also learn the limitation of using any edge splitting methods because you might end up with gaps in your mesh. We've used the bevel tool to create nice rounded hard edges, and we've used the bevel modifier with bevel weights to create different levels of hard edges some rounder than others on the same mesh, again, using bevel weights with the bevel modifier. That will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched all the way through this video. Again, my name is Colin, and I'll remind you again, if you like this video or if you've done something, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel and what I do here. If you want to see more videos like this one in Blender or in the Godot game engine, I teach how to make video games for free using open source software, go ahead and click on the subscribe and bell icon so you see more videos of mine in the future. Check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. That's where I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.